Over 90 million years ago, North Africa was not the dry and deserty environment it is today. There was a large shallow sea that cut a giant chunk out of the Cretaceous continent, spreading far into where the Sahara Desert is now. This ocean was only halted at the base of the Atlas Mountains in the west and at the Red Sea Hills in the east. The coastline of this gulf would have been littered with winding estuaries, hot swamps, and river deltas, possibly larger than any we have today. And this ancient habitat is known as the Kemkem -Kem Beds. River deltas today are abundant with life and usually able to support multiple different large animals coexisting in the same habitat. And this was the same story with this ancient North African ecosystem, only the animals were much larger. The largest freshwater fish in the world is the beluga sturgeon that can commonly grow to lengths of 4 meters. And yet, if it was placed in this North African ecosystem, it would just be an average sized fish among the many other giant species that lived here. And this watery ecosystem with its abundance of fish prey would have been the perfect habitat for one of the top predators of the Cretaceous, Spinosaurus. The river and lakes that surrounded this North African seaway would have been bubbling over with monsters. There was a giant coelacanth called Morsonia that probably weighed over a tonne, being the largest of its kind known. A giant fish named Paranogmius that was the same size as a car, and was most likely herbivorous, being a gentle giant. And there was even a plesiosaur in the ecosystem, that breaking the trend of giants was actually quite small, being around the same size as a dolphin, and most likely filled a similar niche to a river dolphin. By and far the most common fish found here though seems to have been a giant sawfish known as Onchopristis. Sawfish today can grow up to 7 meters in rare cases, making them some of the largest fish in the oceans, but Onchopristis was probably normally around this size. Like living sawfish, they probably lived in the ocean, but sometimes made their way up the streams and freshwater habitats of North Africa. How so many large animals were able to coexist at the same time is not fully understood, but it most likely had something to do with the abundance of waterways. As a river gets nearer to the mouth, the water starts to slow down, depositing minerals and nutrients collected from further upstream. As the river separates into multiple channels to pour into the ocean, it creates incredibly fertile pockets of wetlands intertwined with estuaries, being a perfect habitat for plant life. Due to the abundance and biodiversity of plant life that can be sustained in these types of ecosystems, large animals can be abundant also. The Amazon River, for instance, contains some of the largest fish in the world, like the Ara Prima and the Kuma Kuma, also known as the Goliath Catfish, that are both larger than a human. And there is some evidence that larger populations of these fish can be sustained at the river's delta. The conditions of the Amazon Delta may have been similar to those of the Kemkem -Kem bed. Rivers and lakes surrounded by dense foliage tend to have low levels of oxygen in the water because bacteria consume oxygen as fallen leaves and other vegetation decay in the water. The Ara Prima, found in the Amazon River, is able to swim to the surface and breathe air when oxygen levels are too low to breathe through their gills. It seems that many fish found in the Kemkem -Kem formation were able to do this also. There was a prehistoric lungfish known as Neocratitus africanus that was a relative of the lungfish in Australia today. There was also another peculiar fish known as Barwatius that was also probably able to breathe air as its modern relatives can, known as birches. However, unlike its small relatives, it was very large, possibly exceeding 3 meters. But perhaps a lot like the modern day Ara Prima, despite its large size, would have hidden in the murkiest waters and under dense bushes. The abundance of air-breathing fish shows that the Kemkem -Kem beds would have been bristling with plant life and had all sorts of foliage hugging the rivers. It probably looks similar to the mangrove forest of the Ganges Delta in Bangladesh, although there would not have been any mangrove trees as they had not yet evolved in the Cretaceous. The landscape would have been stricken with a plant called Wishcelia, which probably filled a similar niche to a mangrove tree but was actually a fern, ferns being more diverse at this point in history and filling lots of niches that are filled by flowering plants today. And the king of this great green Eden was the largest land predator ever known, Spinosaurus. It is thought that the giant beast would have made its way down the rivers hunting these fish and crawling over land into different waterways like a crocodile. With its elongated garial crocodile-like snout, nostrils placed high up on the top of its skull, and possible sensors surrounding the end of its jaw, it is the consensus that they were semi-aquatic and piscivorous, or fish eaters. However, it is unclear if their diet was dominated by fish or a mixture of fish and terrestrial animals. Spinosaurus is also often depicted eating the giants in the ecosystem like Onchopristis, and although it may have been large enough, an adult Spinosaurus would have dwarfed even this 7 meter monster. There is currently no direct evidence of a predator-prey relationship with any of the giant fish it shared its habitat with. Another member of the Spinosaur family called Baryonyx that is known from the south of England was discovered with fish scales in its stomach that had signs of degradation from digestion. 
The specimen also had the bones of a juvenile iguanodon on them, meaning they were probably a generalist, and may have had a varied diet but also ate a lot of fish, probably living a lot like a grizzly bear. A study in 2013 found that Spinosaurus's skull was relatively weak for torsion compared with Baryonyx, making their jaws poorly suited for holding onto struggling prey, which may have been a sign that they had moved away from a generalist lifestyle and started feeding on fish more regularly. However, this may also have hindered them from grabbing hold of the large fish in the ecosystem without sustaining injury. Spinosaurus then was most likely highly perceivorous, but may have only eaten fish like Oncopristis and Morsonia if they were juveniles. Spinosaurus was not the only carnivore in the Chemchem formation, and in fact the environment was teeming with them. There were giant crocodiles like Stomatosuchus, and other large theropods like Carcharodontosaurus that wasn't much smaller than Spinosaurus, but in comparison herbivores seemed to be a rarity. It could just be a selection bias as many of the fossils known from the area were purchased from amateur fossil collectors and many of the locals may look for carnival teeth as they fetch a better price. However, it could be that a lot of the herbivorous niches in the ecosystem were actually filled by fish and that most of the dinosaurs were at least a little bit perceivorous. A recent study compared the calcium isotope ratios in the teeth of predatory dinosaurs and crocodiles in the Kenken beds. This can show the type of food these animals eat. Predators with high levels would have eaten more terrestrial animals and low levels indicate the eating of more aquatic prey like fish. First, the study supported the idea that Spinosaurus were mainly fish eaters, but interestingly also showed that many of the predatory dinosaurs in the region may have been a little bit perceivorous as well. Even other giant dinosaurs like Carcharodontosaurus may have sometimes eaten fish, although a lot less than Spinosaurus. It is unlikely they actively hunted them, but living in an ecosystem that was surrounded by waterways may have seen many fish carcasses washed up on beaches, and this was something that dinosaurs in the region took full advantage of, even if they were not adapted for fishing. Eventually, the waterways of the Chemchem and the entire African inland ocean would start to dry up, but this strange watery Eden with its aquatic dinosaurs and giant fish will remain one of the most awe-inspiring ecosystems in prehistory. Thank you for watching. If you want to be updated of future content, then consider subscribing. A massive thank you goes to my patrons, especially Fozzleworth and Greenfalls.